And those decisions, well, we, whether we like it or not, affect the rest of the world too. The G7 is the richest grouping in the world. They basically run the global economy. Any decision they take affects all of us. For instance, their new ban on gold. G7 countries are planning to ban the import of Russian gold. The idea is to starve the Russian economy. You see, gold is Russia's second biggest export. The first, as you know, is energy, oil and gas. In 2021, Russia made $15 billion by exporting gold. G7 wants to cut that off. They want to remove Russian gold from their markets. How will this impact other countries? Like India, for example. India is the world's second largest consumer of gold. China is the largest. Last year, India spent $55 billion on importing gold. $55 billion in one year. So you get how important gold is for India. The question is, will the G7 ban affect Indian consumers? Right now, experts are split. Some say Russian gold was already removed from the market and that existing sanctions include gold. If that's the case, this ban could be a symbolic one. It will not make much of a difference. Others say this new ban will create shortages because indirect sanctions are one thing. A direct blanket ban is a different matter altogether. Gold prices are already reacting to this news. Let me show you some data. In the global markets, gold was up by 0.5%, around $1.8 per ounce. In India, gold futures rose 0.4%. It is trading at more than 50,000 rupees per 10 grams. So the prices are higher, but they're not setting new records, which means the market is still uncertain, trying to figure out which way things will go, because this gold ban could play out in two ways. Scenario one, it creates a shortage in the global market. Russia is the fourth largest gold exporter in the world, the fourth largest. If you ban them, obviously prices will go up. But here's scenario two. Russia looks elsewhere to sell gold. It cannot sell to the G7, so it could try India or China. The next question then is, will this gold be sold on a discount? After all, Russia is selling oil at discounted rates to India. Will they do the same with gold? If yes, it's good news for India. If not, prices could rise. And India's story is unique here because in India, gold is not just a commodity. It has a socio-cultural backstory. And pretty soon, Indians could be paying more for that gold. All because of a decision that they had no say over. Just think about it. India did not sign off on this gold ban. Neither did African countries or Latin American countries. This decision was taken unilaterally by the G7. Now, I know what you're thinking. Only G7 is planning to ban Russian gold. Other countries can still buy it. Technically, yes, they can, but it's not as easy as it sounds. For example, do you know where most of the gold trade happens? In the UK and Switzerland. And if these two countries stop buying Russian gold, even other countries will have to look for new supply chains. And don't forget the impact on prices. The G7 makes up 46% of the global GDP, around 60% of the global wealth. In other words, a lot of purchasing power. If they stop buying anything, prices will rise. Oil, natural gas, gold, fertilizers, you name any commodity. If the G7 stops buying it, the prices will rise. That's how rich they are. I'll give you another example, oil. The G7 is proposing a price cap on Russian gas and oil. What does that mean? It means that Russian energy will have a legal maximum price. Even if the market price rises, it doesn't matter. How can G7 impose such a price cap? How can they set it? By restricting tanker insurance. Every oil tanker is covered by an insurance because we're talking about shipments worth billions of dollars, so naturally they're insured. And this tanker sector is highly monopolized. 95% of tanker coverage is handled by European companies. And needless to say, they follow, follow European laws. So this price cap could complicate oil sales. For instance, will Russia keep offering discounts to India? Will this move drive up overall market prices? And how will the OPEC nations respond? All of these are unknown variables at this point, yet the G7 is pushing ahead. And this reveals a larger problem with the system. The G7 includes just seven countries, seven out of more than 200 countries in the world. They have no representation from Africa, none from Latin America, and just one from Asia. The G7 tries to make up for this by inviting other countries as observers. They get a place in the photo ops, but not 
at the decision-making table. The fact is the G7 is a Western cabal. All these laid-back family photos, all this banter about wardrobe, none of it hides the negative impact the G7 has. They failed on the most important issues of our times, on vaccines, they failed, on supply chains, they failed, on climate change. They take decisions that suit their political interests, and those decisions end up affecting the whole world. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.